These same potential mechanisms for epilepsy and mental health in general are those the ones that apply to autism spectrum disorder as well. Yes, absolutely. There's a clear overlap there. If we start with brain energy, because that's, I think, the, the best known if we think of ketosis. We already talked about the fact that it's cost so much energy for people with a different wired brain to just process everything, but also to hold on to social emotional connection while that's difficult for them. But there's actually more. We also know that there's a biological disturbance in the energy metabolism in people diagnosed with autism. Many people with autism also have insulin resistance. And of course, that's important for the glucose metabolism and for the cells to take up glucose to be able to burn it as a fuel, but it's also super important. Insulin plays a very important role in synaptic plasticity. And synaptic plasticity means like forming the networks in your brain and reshaping that also during development. And so then we come back to the fact that autism is actually a neurodevelopmental disorder and it's actually in the development that it starts being different from neurotypical peoples. Where ketosis comes in, of course, is on one hand, it offers an alternative fuel source, so you can bypass many of these problems, but there's actually more to it. And I also want to stress that because you can even, of course, reverse the problems in the biochemistry.